What is up, guys? Welcome back to The Offside. I'm Mitzan. Jerry. I am Jose. I'm Lalo. And as you can see, we're uh, treating ourselves some delectable Depka donuts, uh, which I did, and uh, some Depka milk. Depka water. Well, some Depka coffee. water. Some Depka coffee. Coffee. Um, All prototypes. Yeah. So we um, don't want it to put out to the public yet. So if we die, at least we suffer the consequences. Right, right. Out. But um, so we're talking about World Cup. Where do we live off last time? Last time. Lap time. We Last lap time. Round 16, we're on the quarterfinals. Round yeah. 16. Um, so we're in top 8 now. Woo! Quarterfinals. So, uh, I don't know, what do you want to start with? First game of the quarterfinals, yeah, I remember what it was. It was Uruguay. Uruguay, France. France. Right. Uruguay, France. Like, it seems like it was like, I know, like 50 years, years ago. ago, I don't remember. Uh, the fuck uh, 2 0, right? France 1 2 0. France 1 2 0. Um, Cavani missed the game. Cavani. Cavani missing the game hurt. Or the way. Let us blunder. Oh yeah, it was Lera. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Griezmann, Griezmann made a goal. He pulled a Caballero. No, more, like, more like he pulled a Carries. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 not as bad as Caballero. But... Somewhere there in Liverpool, it's probably Carries the... was probably crying because the memes came back up and feels bad for Muslera. Um. Don't know if you guys remember the game much, but just sucked that there was like no Cavani. Uh, they had another yeah, player. I think Cavani would have. Uh, yeah, but Stuani. Stuani. Filling in for Cavani. Yeah. But it wasn't really gonna help with that all that much because you know the different players. So there was a really just a game where Suarez was really mm -hmm. by himself, and you saw that. It's a pretty physical yeah. game, but you know Suarez kind of mentality was one way to compare to the rest of the teams. Yeah, yeah. I think Suarez. Um. He was he started the World Cup a little bit, kind of whatever, and he got really he got better, but then he kind of he didn't play too good that game. I think that's when they needed him the most. But I think not having Cavani also was a, a big um, factor to Uruguay losing. So um, I barely saw him touch the ball too, because that's yeah. the thing. Because they were I think playing long ball. Because I can remember uh, uh, like Uruguay barely had any possession of the ball because France didn't allow them, and it just sucked for Suarez. Because when he barely got the ball, he was surrounded by like five, th what, three, four, five people, and he barely had the ball by himself. Yeah. And I think that's the difference that comes in when you have someone like Cavani. You can feed off Cavani and then kind of build a little bit of a link of play with. But mm -hmm. you have a player like him that's so good, he's injured. I mean, that's going to throw the whole game off for of Uruguay. And then um, France right? took advantage of it. And it really seemed like a game at that they didn't really have difficulties managing. Yeah. And you saw a different level of the team. Um, yeah. Where like the last quarter was all a long ball. I tried to pass the ball to Swat is for some luck. No, the player said that and he was just Swat is all by himself. I, mean, I was hoping that the physicality of Uruguay would be like... I mean, it was pretty physical. Like, it was, but I feel like it, it wasn't enough. But... I mean, maybe it happened with Larry Blair and didn't happen. Yeah, they could have tied the game, but they kind of finished through the morale down. Oh, actually, the first goal was a set piece from Veron. I think it was off a free kick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The second goal was, yeah, was that was a, was was a blunder in. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that tells you, bro, set, set pieces are important. We've had a lot of, a World Cup with a lot of set pieces, too, so. I don't know, it was really an, an interesting game. You kind of knew that it was going to be one sided as soon as the Cavani thing happened. You kind of wanted to see. I think Uruguay was gonna maybe try to make it difficult for France, but they showed that when they want to, they can defend well and they can, you know, close spaces for Suarez. And then really, it was just one way traffic, bro. It was just all France. Yeah. Yeah. And it sucks, right? They went out not going, missing their best player. But Uruguay did what they did, and I mean, making it to the quarterfinals. I guess you know that they should be proud of that too. But, but you know, yeah, it makes you think what if too? Because maybe if the Musleta thing wouldn't have happened too. Like, it would have been 1-0, so maybe the game would have still been open. But I think that also killed the morale, too. Like, as soon as the most other thing happened, you knew they were done. So, yeah, yeah. there's nothing too much to talk about that game, really. What, what other games do we have? Belgium, Brazil. Belgium, Brazil, Brazil game. Um, I was, um... That was a good game. That was a good game. That was a good game. Um, Belgium definitely showed that they were a team with... Uh, more control of the ball, more like they were they were more decisive what to do, and Brazil just seemed like more like loss at moments yeah. in the game. So yeah, for that first 
first half, they just countered the crap out of them and, and they mm-hmm. scored them. And Brazil started attacking them, but they just couldn't get through the Courtois. Yeah. Courtois played a really good game. Yeah, yeah. and Neymar down you know, like time. Neymar had um doesn't help his team. They try to they he tried to get some dives but they kept calling yeah. them they, they didn't call, they didn't do the calls. Yeah. They learned from the Mexican yeah. yeah. to not um give into the bullshit. That was a game that actually um met my expectations because I knew from the get go those two teams how they are, um the way that they play, they're open. They're right. offensive and yeah. I knew it was gonna be an exciting game. And it lived up to the hype because yeah. uh, all counters and stuff. They're all oh, they both went back and forth. Each open. Mm-hmm. It's funny, right? Because Brazil, I felt like they were probably the better team the, the ninety minutes. They started off better, but I think what happened was a little bit of misfortune because that first goal was like an own goal for Fernandinho mm-hmm. out right. of a corner, and then from then I, I from then on I think it shook Brazil a little bit. Yeah. And then you saw um, again the counters. That's where fucking Belgium excels at, and they were on point today. When they had De Bruyne, Lukaku, and like Hazard in that front, front three, and they were like causing serious damage to the Brazilian defense. They changed the formation up. They actually, instead of putting uh, De Bruyne in the midfield, they had him like in the wings, and they put Fulani and uh, Witzel in the midfield to add more muscle. Because they also knew, too, that Casemiro was suspended in that game, so they couldn't have used him. So I think they were trying to, you know, like overload the midfield. They try to make it difficult. a lot. Yeah, he was a huge absolute yeah. for Brazil. You felt it in this game. Yeah. That you think, you think if he would have played, they could have passed? It could have been a different story. Uh, it would have been different. Oh, it could have been a different story if Felipe Luis started instead of Brazil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that counterattack left was mostly in Marcelo's exposed. Yeah. I mean, Brazil was yeah. Too, yeah. too offensive. And yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but Marcelo, he played. He, he still played, played pretty he played, good. He played, I mean, he, played, he kept attacking. Yeah. 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 But when it's been a counterattacking World Cup, you know it was bound to happen, especially with the pressure of Lukaku. Especially in that first half, bro, because Belgium, when they were up, like, what? 2-0? Like, like that. They, yeah, once they got that counterattack with De Bruyne, and they looked like they were getting control of the game. And, and Brazil, like I said, Brazil was a better team. But but the chances of Belgium, they had them, they took them, and they were clinical, bro. And mm-hmm. Lukaku was just... Okay, that front three was just playing on point, bro. I think that's the best game that Belgium played the whole, like the whole World Cup. Yeah. I think that's when they really showed... That's like, when they showed they, played, they could play as a team. Yeah. And that's what they showed, I think where you saw the coach, Roberto Martinez, he's a good coach. Because he changed the, 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 the formation up a little bit and took rotated a few players to try to you know counteract Brazil style. But having said that, Brazil probably deserved to, to go through. Because after that second half, they were just bombing Belgium. They were just yeah. holding on for their life, bro. Like but, Brazil but I don't was know, just I, I feel like them. Belgium, they, they also held off pretty well. I mean, and, No, they did well. Mostly thanks to They had a really good... Yeah, was, well, was, well, yeah it was... I mean, it was yeah. a very back and forth game, but I mean, well, that was one of the best goalkeeper performances yeah, of the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I remember the what was it ninety fifth minute, Neymar does like a curler into like almost the top corner that probably should have been two two. He like gets it from like his fingertips, dude. Oh yeah, yeah I remember that one. So that they really, game. they really came really close mm-hmm. to tying the game, and feels bad for Brazil, but one of those teams had to go. <laughs> Go home, man. And, and, Do that for Brazil. I'm Belgium had a little bit of luck, bro, and you need that. Yeah. And I think yeah. they deserved it, too. That's true. Yeah. It was a really good performance from the whole team. But yeah, man. What, it, what other game do we have? Um, Next game was... Uh, England. Yeah, it was uh, Russia against Croatia. Croatia. Another good game. Oh, good. Yeah, another good game. That was like one that was of the best intense, games. Man. One of the most intense games, I think, in the World Cup. It's not the most intense game. I think that was... Um, Cause Russia every tied it up every minute um, every minute was uh, might an important... Tied it up. Right before yeah. the game ended, right? Yeah, yeah. Before, before time five out. minutes before. I remember, I remember seeing that. I was like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, like they were almost about to pass, and, and that... And those penalties. Like the goalkeepers. That was crazy-ass penalties. No, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm confusing the game with, uh, with Denmark and yeah. Russia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. It was still dependent. But still, yeah, it was still. It's still a dramatic game. It's still a great game. And I felt bad for Mario Fernandez, man. That's who was the MVP of that match. And mm-hmm. bad you moment him, and I just went out, man. Had to be a Brazilian. Yeah. <laughs> I was impressed by that game, though. They didn't seem so interesting on paper, but I think once the second half yeah, it showed up, it opened up a little bit. And then, but I don't really remember much of the first 
90 minutes. It was once you got to that second half of extra time. When all hell broke loose. Because it was like, what? Uh, actually, no. First was the uh, Chetty Sepp goal. Yeah. Which was a banger because he hit that outside of the box. And it was like, yeah. what, from 30 yards out. And then, then a tie with... Oh, then like 10 minutes later, um, then the 35th minute, Croatia ties it. Then nothing really happened until what? The s- to the extra time. To the extra time. Because they, 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 yeah. they go to the extra time. Croatia takes a lead. Or was it off of what a corner or a set piece? And then you had and you were you were also you were, you had thought that maybe Croatia was gonna go through it, right? And then was it five minutes until extra time? Russia ties it up. So it really got exciting at the end. Yeah. Cause you saw like once the, the whole stadium pulled through, once like the hosts they're trying to like get support like Russia, trying to get them to go through the host nation and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it motivated them a little bit because you saw that they were getting tired out and they got a little bit of energy at yeah. the end to tie that game. Then you got into PK shootout and that was crazy too. But game there, any yeah. yeah. Now that was yeah. probably gave Croatia a little bit of an advantage because they won the last PK shootout, so they came in this one maybe a little bit with more confidence. Russia too, but um, I don't know anybody would have won it at that at that point. I mean, I, I think it was a pretty even game. I mean, they just went down to penalties and it's you know anybody. I mean that I think Croatia was already. Tested with penalties, so they were. They showed that they're good even on that. They they kept their calm, and some of the Russian kicks uh, penalty shots were not really good. Like he, like I remember the one guy I can't remember who it was, but he kicks it like r- really hard to the side and. He didn't even go in. Just yeah, didn't even go some in. were not really shot very well. So he kicked it well. He kicked it weird. He tried to kick it with yeah. With tres dedos. They, they weren't taken they very. Uh, it didn't seem like they had a lot of experience in it, and and Croatia was tested in that. They almost um, missed like, a few of their penalties. Yeah, I think, too. I think they missed one too, or or one. Modric almost missed uh, another PK kick. It but bounced, it bounced like, into and the post, and, yeah. and into past the line. Yeah, and then and then Rakitic came, came and killed it. Saved it. Second time he does that. Russia, I think, missed like two. My Fernandez missed. Yeah, I think they missed the first one. Yeah, yeah. Same guy that tied it. So we had that game, and what was last game? The what? Sweden, England. Sweden, England. Sweden, England. Um. That game was... I don't remember that game that much. I don't think it was... It wasn't one of, one of the most memorable games of this tournament. Yeah. Sure. Um, Let me see. I don't, think I, saw. I, I don't think I saw that game, actually. I think no, England won 2 nil. Give credit to England. They finally were able to be the team that managed to break through Sweden and break through the defense. Yeah. Was that, did that game win the penalties? No, that no, game went 2-0. Right. That was the, before that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that game went 2-0. Yeah, yeah. And guess how they won it? Set pieces. Which is something that's been common with a lot of these games now. Well, that's been like their, their most important thing. They're good at it. Pieces. Well, uh, in the whole World Cup, but especially in England. Yeah, they, they, they're good at they've it. They've been one of, one of their biggest... Um, and they definitely have center backs that um, are good enough from corners and set pieces. That's like a strength that England has. I've noticed. Especially if it was for Harry Maguire, because they always seem to go, at, go for him. And I know he, he like... Um, Scored, I think, the first goal for England. Then Delhi Ali finally came in and he scored the second goal. He kind of had, like, he was on and off at this tournament. Because I know to say they said supposedly, like, Ali came in a little bit with the injury. Mm-hmm. So he wasn't, like, in form for this whole tournament. But um, I don't think England cared. Um, they they really cared about making it an interesting game. I think they were worried about trying to break out that, that really good uh, Sweden defense. But, yeah. Sweden, though, I do remember the second half, um, they actually came really close to, like, maybe opening the game up a little bit because they were coming under England, and then Pickford was kind of clutch. That's a, that's a fucking guy that I wasn't expecting to do so well in this tournament. Yeah, he played yeah. pretty good. A goalie that was probably, like, under everyone's radar. Um, no one was really sure how good he was going to be mm-hmm. as the number one goalie. And then after that PK shootout against Colombia... Um, that gave him a lot of confidence. And now you've seen him. He, I would even go as far as say he's been growing in, as, into one of the best goalkeepers in the tournament. Because he came in clutch for Sweden. But, you know, uh, I wouldn't be mad if I was Sweden making it this far. I'll tell you who is mad, though. Zlatan. Did you, you heard the bet that he had with uh, Beckham? <laughs> yeah, something about um, if he lost, he had to go to like, an Ikea or something like that. I don't, well, yeah, like, I think uh, it was... Uh, what was it? Like if it's like if uh, if if Sweden if, won, I think Beckham had to buy something in IKEA. Had to buy dinner or for something. For him. And then if, if England won, Zlatan would have to go to Wembley. But 
with uh, an England shirt. With an England shirt, eating tea and crumpets at halftime. <laughs> was back home. And he would pay the tickets. That's funny. Yeah. So, it was pretty, it was pretty cool. England, you know, I thought Sweden was going to make it this far. Yeah. It's always I back. The best players out, they do better. It always seems to happen with a lot of teams, yeah. Dublin mm -hmm. was really chocolatey. It was really hard to eat this one. Where's Dan Letcher? Yeah. It was really hard. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good, though. Um, so. I should have brought napkins. Well, we, we can't afford napkins with Depka. We don't have Depka napkins yet, um, unfortunately. Yet. Um, we got Depka napkins, Depka cloth. We got a big napkin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that's the quarterfinals. So that's the quarterfinals, so we should go to the semifinals. Which I think was the most important. And this is where it starts getting interesting. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Um, so let's start with France and Belgium. Um, and Belgium. I think that was a disappointing game to me. I expected way more from Belgium in that game. Considering how good they've been playing, yeah. I think that that game was... I mean, you saw... Hints and parts of Belgium. For moments, I thought Belgium were, were the better team. But overall, especially towards the, the second half, I think they, 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 they broke down. They, they lost. Uh, I think the best player of that match was Hazard. Hazard played really good. Yeah, the best player of the match by far. Sadly, he didn't yeah. win, but I think he was the best player. He was, he was running yeah, up yeah. and down, doing plays, juking players from left and right. He was trying. You, you he, was trying. he was really he trying was to trying. win that game. He was really trying to get, bring the team together. But it wasn't enough, man. They couldn't find yeah. that goal. Because um, there's one guy that probably has it in Belgium that probably shouldn't feel too bad about losing is Hazard. Because like you said, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he was the one guy out of the team yeah. that was trying to make everything work for Belgium yeah. even when they were losing. Like, it was amazing. He was, even with, with Brazil, I remember, like, he was still juking, going around players yeah. and stuff. Well, he was, like, being, like, physical and, like, being he was on the ball. He was, like, getting, like... He was trying to press trying, the issue. Trying to be in all the players. Yeah. yeah. Um, he was trying to look for... For free kicks, he was. Doing I just thing. wanted Belgium, to, the rest of the Belgian players, to play like that. Cause I that's had, what I'm saying. That, yeah. That's why, to me, it seemed like Belgium, compared to the last game, they kind of toned it down a bit. I don't know if it was because they were more nervous. So, yeah, it was nervous. Nervous. Maybe, it was maybe, nervous. maybe yeah, the pressure, mm -hmm. or I don't know what it was, or maybe they just couldn't yeah. control the, the 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 game at all. Right. But compared to the last game, which was I think one of the best games against Brazil. Um, they kind of disappointed me. Because the way they played against France was not the way they played against Brazil. Because the way they played against Brazil, they f they played with a lot of confidence. Even like in the when and, and, even when yeah, Brazil was good, against France, France it was more like more confident. Against France, I think they're more like like yeah, they're both well, pretty cautious, yeah. not trying to get countered. Yeah, yeah. The thing that France got I mean, the, the winning goal, goal was a because it was, 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 was there, a was header. Yeah, yeah, it was a the header. Does made all the difference. Titi's uh, dance. What was the? Oh yeah, after his his celebration. Supposedly he got it from Pogba. Is that what? Yeah, because he said in the post conference thing that uh, it's Pogba's dance, and then he does it with. With them and stuff, and then so when he started doing the dance, that's why Pogba jumped in and joined. Everything. It was one hell of a goal. I mean, it came, you know, the set piece, bro. I mean, you know, another set piece. It made all the difference. Um, I would have wanted there have been more goals because knowing how good both these teams that, are. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, so I was expecting like, yeah, three and yeah so I was looking like, more like you know counters from France and Belgium. Yeah, Especially it was a really Belgium. conservative game from both of them. Yeah, surprisingly, like, but but see, it was really conservative from Belgium to me, I, other than. Some of the, the runs that, that Hazard yeah. had, and some sometimes De Bruyne, De Bruyne had like some plays, but... He had chances to I score. Thought, I thought Belgium was going to be more like, yeah. you know, on it. And and I think towards the end, they played a little bit more... Um, like in the last 10 minutes. Yeah. But I mean, they should have played the whole half like that, you know, or the yeah. whole game completely, if they wanted to win with that. But... Yeah, I think... But France knew too, probably, like if you, they try to play them at the same game, like they had to right. um, they would probably... Their defense would probably get in trouble. So I think you saw too, like the Belgium, as soon as they got the goal, France was like, you know what, we don't care. If we have to sit back and defend, they win. And you even saw Griezmann and Mbappe and Giroud going all the way back and defending right. and stuff too. So it was a really, because see, this is where the experience comes in. You have to keep that in consideration. For, because as good as Belgium is, they've never been, well, they rarely ever at this point in the World Cup. Not far. They're a young team, they're not used to winning Wait, the Is that the farthest on? They, they got four in 86. In 86. Yeah. So but it's been a while, hard. right? It's been a long time. So, I mean, as much as you you want to play, like, that free, 
flown football and stuff. It's like when you know you're like you're one game away, okay, yeah. from making it to a final. As much as you don't want to think about the nerves, like you know your nerves and stuff, and you know yeah, the pressure, you, you have to, it gets to you. you have to, and yeah, I think for Belgium, you. it got to them more yeah. than for France, because France at least you could say, well, they're used to getting to this point yeah, in the World Cup. They went to the semifinals in the Euro. Two that's years the difference, ago. bro. Right. And I think that's what sets apart these teams when you get to that this point. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, I Belgium, think I think it got to them. Man, France just um, played better. They managed the game better. Yeah, they even missed a couple of shots yeah. before the line. Yeah, they played better. They managed the game better, and it was it was kind of like an evenly matched game though at the end. And I think it it, it was a set piece mm -hmm. that made all the difference too. But maybe like I said, if Belgium would have tried a little bit more, De Bruyne put would have put away a few chances that he had. It would have been a different right. game. Hazard though, like I said, for a guy that they lost, but he should hold his head on, man. He had one of the best, I think, individual performances mm -hmm. like. Throughout this whole oh, world, tournament. Tournament. yeah. I agree. Despite him going out and maybe having to play third or fourth place, I think he should at least for what he's done for Belgium, be can at least considered for Golden Ball, because he's yeah. been so good in this tournament. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah. I think I think his performance yeah. is one of the better ones yeah. of all the players. Um, but no right. surprises, France is through, and now you get. Well, yeah, France, France is through. through to the final, and and the contender is comes to her next game, Croatia versus England. England. Which was Ooh. one uh, yeah, hell of a game. game. I think I think this game truly. I think the favorites were obviously England. Oh, yes. I think yeah. no one can deny this. England yeah. was the favorite, Absolutely. but Croatia said, "Fuck that, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna." Be um, I think you know we need we need we need to commend Croatia. It's the class yeah. they showed throughout this uh, whole tournament. They, they've, they've shown yeah. I what? think you said they've shown class. They've shown yeah. um, confidence. They've shown yeah. uh, uh, they a warrior like this, attitude. Like, it's like they have this motivation that they're just. Yeah. I mean, these guys know this is the last shot they got. Really. Yeah. The I think that they're going all out, and I think it. You can see it in all the plays. They don't give up. I mean, they 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 were losing against Russia. They came back. They won on penalties. They were all these games. Yeah. Were, I, England. They were losing. They came back. Um, wh where did England go wrong? I think. I, what do you guys think? I mean, ah, the curse of England. <laughs> the curse of England. Yeah, I mean, maybe yeah. they got confident with them. Do you First think? Goal? I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know. I don't know. I don't know. if They got confident. I think. I think. Um, they didn't finish off. South the game. didn't know how to read the game. Hold it off, me. As well know. as um, was it the Croatian coach? I forgot his name. I forgot his name too, but I know you're, you're talking about. Right. Well, him. I think he. I think he's a better reader of the game. Southgate is more of like a morality boost, you know. Like he brought England back, you know. Yeah. But I think he had a little trouble reading that game. What he needed. Um, it's the Croatia, they got tired. They just lost their. And you could see that they were tired. They they seemed like they they kind of got like more tired towards the end. Like they were more like physically. They were just trying to get to them. Yeah. Yeah. Croatia yeah. tied. Croatia tied that goal in that game. Yeah. It was all Croatia for that. It was all Croatia. Oh yeah, it was all them. Like they they um. I mean, you gotta think Croatia played two an extra time, two what, two extra time games for them, the quarters and the semis. They didn't even look tired. They looked so. I mean, it, physically strong. When I first saw that game, it looks like before Croatia tied that game, it looks like England was time to see Mando. Yeah, they can yeah. barely get out. Yeah. They were like, they were looking like they were running like they were Dude, pretty tired. Yeah, yeah. And once Paris just scored that goal, Croatia was like, we can do this. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and you see how Croatia were playing? They were like touches. They were like. But that was it. Was more like on. They were. They were running on a high, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More, more well, determination. Well, that, well, that's the thing about, well, you know, the sport. Well, I mean, all sports in general, but I think it's more true in in, in, in soccer than than it. It's such an you have to take advantage of these emotional moments. You know, when you make a goal, that's your time to capitalize and and, and make another one. You know, momentum or is push a big, through. Is a big part yeah, of momentum is so important soccer, because, yeah. you know, it you don't get that adrenaline rush or whatever you want to call it for too long. Yeah, and I think and, that's and where some teams uh, don't know how to manage. That. Yeah, and I think that's where England fucked up. Yeah, because yeah. they they scored in the fifth minute, and I thought to myself, they're gonna run away with this. Yeah, and they actually have more chances. Like honestly, honestly, I thought when they scored, I thought that was it for Croatia. I was like, yeah, no, they're gonna score. Yeah, a second. If they would have scored another one, it probably would have been it for Croatia because they, 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 they were, were better at the yeah. Because for a moment, in the first half, I think we all can agree it was all England for the most part, and Croatia was kind of holding off as some. I mean. They did their thing, but the second half and, and the extra time. There was a chance it where was I think Kane missed and he could have passed it to Sterling because he was wide open. It, that's yeah. what I think. England, they had, they had chances and they missed it. As soon as he blocked it, Kane got the rebound and I think it hit like the post and like 
and then yeah. it bounced yeah, off. Players and, on the defense, and then the sure defenders, yeah. and so they have themselves to blame because they could actually kill that game off. They yeah, let even Croatia that, back in the, the game. Extra time honestly. goal was a defensive error by England. And they just let Manzukic waltz yeah. in there and score. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But once you saw Perisic go go goes in, you already saw it even before it went to extra time. It looked like Croatia was gonna steal it. Cause then it was so weird. I was seeing them getting so nervous at the back. Like Walker was making back passes to Pickford. Um, they almost were, like they made were making so many silly mistakes at the back. Yeah. England. Well, that they're, 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 they kind of broke down. The nerves really got the to them after they there. tied that goal. And then, like you said, when he uh, Paris just almost scored off that post, mm -hmm. like you saw, they were kind of melting down. Like they were having like a little bit of a mental yeah. breakdown. So when they got to that extra time, it actually helped England more because they kind kind of let them compose themselves. But at the end. Um, Croatia won with all heart, honestly. Yeah. To get where they got to. That's, that's what they've been shown. The and I, you got to commend them for that, dude. Because, I mean, oh, yeah. they have no excuses. They played a 220-minute game, so it would have been easy for them to, you know, just right. tire out, just be like, we can't do it no more, man. But they won that game. No, I mean, and I think they won it. I think tactically they did the right thing, and I think individually they've done the right thing. Uh, it was a whole team that played amazing. Yeah. It was, that, was, that was a true team playing, you know, yeah. I think. I think they're the one of the teams that, in terms of that, they've shown that um, uh, determination. Yeah. I think would be the word. I think that's uh, this, hard, yeah. Hard, yeah. You know that. You know that. You know that because some teams they, they either have like the talent, the skill, but they like that. But they like they, the determination. You, you, you kind of don't see it. You know, fighting them. Yeah. 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 You know? Not only that too, but I think they're one of the best teams that they've shown in the in the hundred and twenty minutes. Like when they have to go to extra time, like they're full. They can full. act. They can continue to be focused. If not, they, they can become even better. Almost. At, when it goes extra like they grow into they, the they game. Grow. And they, they play well. Not that just they yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. They got good players. They got they got players. players. They're Modric, not as stacked as England. Modric has been incredible for them. Rakitic yeah. has been great for them. Rakitic, Modric, Rebic, Perisic, Perisic, Vida, Vida. Vida has been very good. Yeah. He's been very important. Like, Kovacic, Kovacic, they didn't get a solid. The team is talented. They have world class players. I mean, they're not obviously as stacked as England. Right. But Well, I think England has more what you would call like uh, more of a coming talent with more youth. Yeah, and That's like the, the big names, you know, more and some big names. You know, yeah. now obviously Croatia has some big names too, but England, you know, they're more like the popular. Well, I was, I was at, you know, a lot, you may throw, none of these two have been this far. I mean, Croatia has been third place in '98, and that's a very long time. And these players weren't even in the national team. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, all these true. players have been this far in this stage in their career in the club teams. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah. with Rakitic and Modric and Kovacic, they're both in playing La Liga and Barca and Real Madrid. Matsukic right. is playing Atletico, Juventus, and Hoop. Yeah. And, I mean, That's these guys think, have, been, yeah. have been in this kind of stage before. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they kind of have that experience from all the years built up. Right. right. That's why I think it's helped them, too, because it was a game where you had a Croatia team that maybe was tired, but had more experience to be able to manage exactly. the game oh, yeah. right. against an England team. That was so young, and to be honest, nobody had them to, to make it this far to oh, begin yeah, with. Nobody. The fact that they were in a semifinal, this young England team, I think, that's, you know, I, you got to commend them for that, but I think that's when you really start seeing the nerves. Like a lot of these young guys, like you said, Lingard, Ali, even Rashford when he come in. But honestly, I mean, England, this is the first time I think anyone, the English fans can say this in a long time. I think the English fans and not in the nation itself can say this is the first time they can go out of an international tournament. Proud of their team. Exactly. Because it's been a long time. It's been a really long time. I mean, they so want well. a PK shootout. They the want a PK semis. shootout. Yeah, they play well. Their first ever PK, PK shootout. shootout. So, they haven't been this far in 28 they, they years. They can possibly walk out with a medal. They might walk out as top scorer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. They, they can possibly they can walk out with a medal. I mean, as of today, decades. we don't know tomorrow. Yeah. We'll yeah. have in a few hours the third uh, yeah. place game. They, they, they can definitely play. do something too. And I mean, no matter what happens in that third place game, it feels like they yeah. finally have a team and a coach that they identify with. They have yeah. a, a road, that, a yeah. clear road now to build well, upon. They have something to build upon. Because if this England team, with they had no expectations to get far, got this far... I mean, the future is, is bright, bright for them. They can build yeah. on this, and I think they, they, they have the confidence now. These guys, yeah. they definitely can build yeah, yeah. Yeah. The next exactly. year, they can build up. The year, yeah. Having yeah. said that, though, you feel like maybe they might have missed the opportunity because... Because they were so close. Yeah, and probably this yeah. will be the only time they're ever going to have it this easy of a path, like on paper, to make it to a World Cup final. Because to say that you were able to like avoid a Germany, Brazil, Argentina, France, and... Right. Just having to go against yeah. like a Sweden and Colombia to get to the it final. It probably won't be as easy for them. They, but they had a little bit of luck. Yeah. Not taking nothing away from England because right. you need that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, I mean, 
you should we should just take away the good. If you're an England fan, just take the good that comes with it. I mean, whoa, that's a timer. We're gonna die now, right? That's a bomb. Did you fucking plant these donuts with bombs? Or? Yeah, you're we're all gonna screw up. Wait, you guys didn't do anything. No. no. <laughs> I was just oh, getting it fucked. Um. So well, I guess we can conclude saying, uh, it's not coming home, guys. It's not coming home. <laughs> Still Croatia. But they didn't say when it was coming home. Well, that's true. That's yeah, what some people say. That, that's that's bullshit, though. <laughs> <laughs> we all know what they meant. It's coming home. It's broken. It's not home. Feels bad for England. Sorry, England fans. Uh, but yeah, no, you know what? Fuck them up. Mick Jagger showing up to the game. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's messed up. It's, yeah, it's all your fault. It's like Maradona. He's a sexual enough for a game. Stop it. Stay the fuck home. See, last World Cup, we didn't go to the games, did he? We made it to the final. Yeah, I don't think well, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I remember. I mean, he went to the Brazil-Germany semi, and he was supporting Brazil, and guess what happened? 7-1. <laughs> <Stay on. laughs> so Stay go on. for those games. Every game he's gone good. and supported, yeah. the team loses. It's a real um, curse he has. All right, guys, we'll end it here. Um, I'm Ethan. I'm Jerry. And I'm Jose. Hello. We'll catch you guys in the next one. You guys need that?